having a lovely day so this is something I've been meaning to do for quite some time now and that is show you my Mazda R100 replica so it's not a genuine R100 it is a Mazda 1200 coupe that was how it left the factory I turned it into an R100 so I've owned this car for nearly 25 years now it was the first car I ever bought it was a car I got my license in. It was a car I'll never sell. And it was a car that'll probably be passed down through my family. But yes, as I said, this car did not start its life as an R100. It was a Mazda 1200 coupe and it was white when I bought it. Me being young, I was 14 and a half when I bought it and I wanted to modify it and make it look like a R100. I'd always wanted a Mazda when I was younger that I said to myself that that's gonna be what I want and I wanna get that as my first car and I did and this is what I ended up with. Uh, so me being young, I wanted to modify it before I got my license and I worked on my grandmother's fruit block to pay for it and modify it. And one of the first things I wanted to do to it was turn it into an R100. It did not have a rotary in it. I ended up putting a 1.4 litre four cylinder in it out of a van. Um, I put a five speed gearbox behind the four cylinder and that was the running gear in it. I sent the car off to a paint and panel shop. I bought R100 parts for it. So all the grill, bonnet, bumper bar, and round tail lights for it, and had all that stuff put onto it. And the car got re-sprayed white. And I drove it for a few years like that when I got my license. I got sick of it being white and I wanted to change colour of it so I painted it green so it's GMH Turnpike Green I believe it's not called Turnpike anymore it's called some other colour uh, I'm not sure what it is um, my cousin did tell me he's a, uh, a person who knows his colours pretty well but I would have to look it up and find out in a message what he said it was but yeah so I had the car painted green, um, got it out of the paint panel shop, and about a week after it being on the road, I was driving it on a highway with a mate in the car, and I hit a kangaroo in it, and it destroyed the front right corner of the car, so the guard, the bumper, the grill, the bonnet was all destroyed in the accident. So all the R100 stuff went in the bin and I couldn't find any other R100 stuff at that time. So I converted it back to the 1200 bar grill I custom made to make it look like an R101. And at the time I had found a Mazda 1300 bonnet and took it back to the panel shop and had it re-sprayed again in front of it, got repaired and re-sprayed green again. 
got the car back on the road. Uh, three weeks later, I was on that same highway and within a kilometer of where I'd hit the first kangaroo, I hit another one and it ran into the right rear quarter panel. And at this time, I thought the car might, was cursed and I didn't want any more damage to happen to it. So I took it off the road and decided to turn it into a drag car. So I removed the four cylinder that was in it and gearbox. I upgraded the diff to a van diff and put a Mazda 12A Bridgeport engine into it that was built by Select Maz and got a Series 2 RX7 five speed gearbox to put behind it with a heavy duty clutch and stuff. It was running extractors and a Weber, a downdraft style Weber. I uh, had the car tuned and got it back on the road and drove it for a little bit on the road. I didn't really want to drive it on the road too much and decided to start drag racing it. So I took it to Mildura Sunset Strip and dragged it numerous times up there again and again. Its best time at Mildura Sunset Strip was with that engine package was a 7.8 at 96 miles per hour and was a very quick time for being how long ago that was. That was in about 2002. So it was a very fast car back then. It, it was a very fun car to drive with the Bridgeport in it, but I wanted to go quicker. So I decided I was gonna turbocharge it, but not that engine. So I bought a imported RX-7 Series 513B turbo for it and upgraded the gearbox to a RX-7 Series 5 five speed manual gearbox and was still running the van diff. It had to, I had to send the car to Adelaide to get a custom made exhaust manifold and intercooler, radiator, and oil cooler done on it, which was all done by ASE in Adelaide. Uh, the turbo I got for it was a TO4 E60 mil Garrett turbo. The wastegate was a Teal 38 mil gate, and had that all put onto it. It had a aftermarket ECU, a, LT8 Microtech ECU. Had that all done, had it all wired into it and sent the car to MRE, Mildred Race Engineering to be tuned. And I got a phone call from them not long after I dropped the car off so they could get it running and they said the motor was no good, it had a cracked end plate and it was leaking a lot of oil underneath the engine after they had it running. So that was a completely standard Series 513B turbo engine. So I decided then and there, I was gonna have the engine built. So the engine got full built by MRE. Uh, a lot of money and a lot of work went into the engine so it, it, had, it had extra gals, it had been clearance, ice tropter and crank, uh, you know, you name it, it was done to it. Uh, this was about in 2008, somewhere around there. And it was, it was quite a lot of money I had spent on the engine. And they got it going again. And it was on pump fuel and it managed to pull uh, 400 horsepower at the rear wheels on 14 PSI boost. And I got it back and put it back on the road. I drove it around for a bit and it was ridiculously fast, like ridiculously fast. 
uh, decided to take it back to um, Mildura Sunset Strip and see what it would pull. It, it managed to run 7.2 at 104 miles per hour was its quickest time with that setup. And that was in about 2008, 2009. I ran it at Adelaide International Raceway, was its next event with that setup. At around that time, it was around 2008, 2009, and the motor detonated for some reason. And yeah, the motor was not salvageable. Uh, it was the first run it went out for and it detonated. We ended up, I pulled the motor out and took it back to MRE. Obviously, there's no warranty with a race motor. They did help out a lot with it. And the motor got full build again. The only thing that was salvageable was the crank and the front plate. Everything else is all new again in it. And that, that's the motor that's been in it ever since now. Uh, it's, I've put it through absolutely, <coughs> absolutely hell. And it hasn't let me down yet. So touch wood or cross my fingers, you know, it's been fine. Um, but yeah, so after all that happened, I decided the car was not ever going to be run on pump fuel again because it detonated. So it got changed over to E85. So the car got changed over to E85 in about 2012 and I ran the Nationals with it. And it was on the same power, basically the same power. I think it was 412 horsepower at the rear wheels on E85 and a little bit less boost and it went its quickest time it ran down there was 10.4 at 137 um, the car is not it has a cage in it a full cage but it's not been approved um, so we got told not to run it for like the full length of the quarter just maybe back it off at a thousand, I got told. So, and I didn't want to get blacklisted from a track, especially Adelaide International Raceway, and not being able to take it back there again. So I just did what they said. It may have went a really low 10. I don't think it had a nine in it. Uh, we were running it at, on a day that was 36 degrees, which is really hot. Um, it may have went a couple mile per hour faster, who knows. So, I ended up, one of the other times in between all this, I, uh, after I ran it down at Adelaide at the Nationals, I took it back to uh, the Sunset Strip in Mildura and ran it again. And it's, um, its best time up there since has been uh, six, seven, uh, 108 miles per hour, I believe it was. Uh, I got bored of that setup and decided to change it. The engine still stayed the same, but I ditched the turbo that I had on it then and it's running a Garrett GGX42R now on it. The wastegate got replaced with a, a TurboSmart ProGate 50mm. Uh, the old Series 5 inlet injection got taken off of it and replaced with a 50mm injection perfection with a custom platinum, an old custom intercooler pipe, piping. Uh, the ECU's now being changed, it's running an LT16C uh, with a data logger dash. Um, the trans 
is a automatic now. It's not a manual anymore. It's a Ford C4 transmission that's been full built. Um, it has a nine inch diff in it as well now. Uh, there's heaps of other stuff that's been done in it. I've had the trans tunnel done by Adelaide Motorsport Fab. Uh, they also did work on the rear end as well with an anti-roll and double adjustables and cow, cow tracks in the rear end of it. Yeah, parachute as well they did. So we're having problems at the moment. The stall's not quite right. So the trans has been in and out. I have to take time off of work to get stuff done to this car, um, as in tuning and stuff. I have to take holiday leave to make it happen and to get things fixed on it. As I said, a lot of the stuff that needs to be done on this car needs to be done in Adelaide. And that's not anywhere near where I live. It's a 250K drive each way. So, and a lot of places aren't open on the weekend, so I have to take time from work to do this. But it's getting there. So we've had it on the dyno three times with this new setup, but the trans hasn't been right in it. Um, there's been ECU problems as well, niggling little problems with that. Um, but we're slowly getting there. Um, it's nearly ready to go back down and to be tuned again and to see whether we're any closer to making it work how we want it. But yeah, so I'll leave it off there. Um, I'll give you a walk around of the car before I end the video off so you can see what it is. Um, and yeah, just, yeah, so it's, uh, it's, it's a fun but stressful toy. So yeah. But yeah, so if you made it this far in the video guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'd like you to consider subscribing to my channel so we can make the channel bigger. And um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers guys, bye.